Hey, Jim Bergman with MeasureQuick. Um, Thursday, August the 15th, and we are getting ready to roll out an official App Store and Google Play Store update to the MeasureQuick application. So some pretty cool stuff going on here, and if you haven't updated, like now's the time. It's really worth the effort. I'm gonna open up MeasureQuick HVAC. Down here at the bottom, you'll see we have the, a, new, a new icon, a new little splash screen here when we open up, and it's gonna open up to the uh, grid page on here for me. And you'll see right away, we're trying to get the user experience better. So what does a technician want to do right away? Most of the time when you come in here, you're probably looking to do some diagnostics. So you can see right now, MeasureQuick's already in the MQ Assist said, hey, you don't have any tools put in. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Add Tools, and you're going to see it's going to pull up the toolbox. And so we made some pretty significant modifications to the toolbox. You can either add or buy tools from the toolbox, which you've been able to buy before, but we consolidated the screen up just to make it easier to use. So I've got this set up right now. I've got some JB Climate Class probes going. I've got a couple of field piece probes going. So I'm gonna go ahead and just click plus add on the JB probes. It picks them up right away. And now if I go back here, you'll see at the top, the JB probes are installed and they're on. So if I go into my probe manager, it's gonna see they're all mapped in here. now. You may have to remap a probe or two, and to do that, you just tap on the probe and you map it to what its, what its job is. So eventually here, I'm gonna make this actually fully auto map if you have it uh, hooked up to a running system. You can see my supply air, my return air, my outdoor air temperature, everything looks uh, good on there. I'm gonna hit back and we'll go ahead and we'll put in these two field piece manometers. So I hit plus add again. It picks up the job link kit, so we'll go back. And again, just verifying the probe manager returns negative, supplies positive, so that looks great where everything's ready to go. So now if I go back to the grid view, you'll see that all my readings are coming in. And I just want to show you this because I think this is cool. So if we were to close this up and reopen up MeasureQuick, as long as your probes are on, as soon as it sees the probes, they're going to come in. So you're right to work, right? It, it happens very quickly. And you can see at a glance, what readings are in range and out of range. The low pressure's got a, if you look at this here, it's got a little check mark next to it. That little check mark is telling us that it's in range. This is telling us that it's out of range here. It's like reading low, right? So we can see what our, if we tap that, we can see our calculated target and what our ideal range is. Now, if you want to get a little bit better idea how far out of range it is, then you just tap on the gauges here and we'll go to our outdoor readings. You can see our liquid lines right on the threshold and we've also got a low, what looks like a low head pressure on the lower side anyway. And that's because this is a Goodman condenser. They use the two ton condensing coil with a ton and a half compressor. So it tends to run a, a lower head pressure and a lower liquid line temperature. If we were to do this on a project and benchmark it, that would go away, right? But if we go back to this grid view for just a minute, again, everything's a button. So we know that this is not a TXV, this is a piston. So I'm gonna go ahead and tap that and change it to a piston. And then if I want to know like things like what's my target superheat for that piston, I just tap on that. It's going to tell me my calculated target is 18.2 degrees, current value 16.2, I'm in range. And it shows that plus or minus five degrees that we would have for a fixed surface metering device. So very simple and easy to use. And no matter where you start, if I'm fond of the classic gauge view on here, if I close the app and I restart it, again, it's automatically going to detect the tools it's going to switch to that view and that readings are going to come in pretty much instantaneously on there, right? So very fast and easy to use on that. Now, a couple other things we've got on here. Obviously, you can swap between trending and so if you want to look at any trends, you can see what those are. And these are called plot band lines. So the plot band lines show you are things in the right range or not. So you can see what's in range, what's out of range going through there. So our high and our low pressure are within range on there. Superheat and subcooling are within range. Very easy to see what's going on as far as not only what the trend is, but is that reading in range or not. And then we've got things that are like, if we want to go in here and generate a report, we can generate a report. Now, some features like setting a benchmark, those are tied into projects, right? That's on the paid side of the application. But, and I'll show you that in just a minute, but we've tried to make it like really easy to use. So let's go back to the grid for just a minute. And from the grid, there's a lot of things we can do. We can actually start a project, we can do a quick test, or we can just start testing, right? So I'll hit just start testing here for a minute. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna tell us on MQ Assist that this is a 13 to 17 sensor system, optimized for warm, humid climate. The top diagnostic is we have low sensible capacity, that's below 90%. 
and then it's going to update here so it looks like that diagnostic went away. So if we look at, tap on the diagnostics here, it's going to tell us if there's any diagnostics that are found. And we're probably just bouncing on that verge of being between 70 and 90 percent. So we can enter electrical from this point. So in this case, we want to put in our electrical formation. We can do that. So it's again, everything's simply accessible from that gauge screen if you want to use our grid screen, if you want to use the grid. So very, very nice feature to have. You can also make your electrical readings from there. So if we wanted to add in our electrical meter, here, I'll go ahead and flip that on here real quick. We'll go ahead and enter electrical and I'm gonna turn on our redfish meter and let's just go back to our toolbox here and we'll just add in the redfish meter. So it detected it right away and we'll hit connect on there and you'll see that now the meter's reading watts, right? So if we wanna enter electrical on this, we can go in here and we can capture our evaporator fan watts, we can capture our condensing unit watts, etc. Really tried to make this a lot easier to use. Home screen, you know, if we tap on the home screen, that'll take us back to where we can start a project. So let's just do that here real quick. We'll use our guided workflow and we'll just add or select equipment. We'll select this GMC piston trainer and then that'll take us over and go to our guided workflow with our split screen on there so you can see once we benchmark this in, it's all dialed in and running like it should run. So very simple and easy to use. And probably, again, one of the, one of the features we're able to bring back is this, screenshotting. So if you want to screenshot, you can. And a big reason we're able to do that is down here at the bottom, right? We have this longitude and latitude along with the, with the QR code on there that takes us back into where that job is at. Allows us to have that, that data integrity with the screenshotting now that we know where the screenshots came from. And you can see this just updated to the address because we're in a, in a project. It's got a little green check mark next to it telling us that, hey, we're actually on this job. It's compared the current location to the geolocation. A lot of really great features there, like this guided workflow for just a minute. And we'll just hit exit and delete. And yes, and we're back to the home page. Uh, a lot of cool things we can do on here. Just one more thing I think is interesting. If you want to customize your, your home screen, Maybe you like your equipment map at the top. Maybe you want to hide what's new in Measure Quick, or you want to hide the quick test on there. You can do that. Save your start screen, and it's going to update now, and you'll have that equipment map at the top, your tasks down below, your dispatch projects, your test tracker, and access to Measure Quick Cloud. So all these things are user customizable, and you can make it work the way you want. Again, back to our roots, back to tech-centric, making it work the way technicians want to work. And I think you're gonna find this whole update just really much, much easier to use and much more fun to use. So let us know what you think, but if you get a minute to update it at the App Store and hey, it'd be great if you'd give us an updated review on the application if you have a little bit of a chance to use it because I, I think you're gonna find it pretty awesome. This is Jim with MetroQuick. Thanks a lot for watching.